my name is Mohammed Ali um, and my mother Rukia Begum passed away from COVID just a few weeks ago on January the 17th 2021. Um, I'm making this video because I felt compelled that to share with people the use of technology how it's such an important tool to embrace actually. I'm hearing too, many, too much how people are suffering alone in hospital without their families and, and, and many people who are dying alone. There are two parts to this video. The first part is how we as a family used iPads and FaceTime group video calling to kind of be with our mother in these difficult moments, as well as her feel like she had her family with her. And the second part is the funeral service and how we were able to increase from the restrictions of 30 people uh, through live streaming so that people were able to be part of the process. This toolkit that I'm putting together is mostly centered around the iPad. FaceTime video was probably the best one. Why? Because WhatsApp video calls, you need a, fo you need a phone and the screen is too small. So when I, my mother was, you know, literally in her last days, she was able to see on a ni nice iPad Pro screen. As you can see, this was the one that she had, an 11-inch iPad Pro. On a FaceTime video call, all of my siblings could be all on the screen and we'd be still quite big. Whereas on a WhatsApp video call, you really are shrunk to quite a small size. We chose FaceTime group video calling because it was an alternative to WhatsApp. Because WhatsApp, from what I know, doesn't, doesn't work on tablets. Group video calls were essential for me because it wasn't just about in one person, which of our siblings, especially if there are four, five, six of you. I just found you know, FaceTime to be the one that was stable uh, and easy to use. FaceTime group video calling only works on the more newer models. These are the devices that can handle FaceTime video group calling, specifically group video calling. iPhone 6S onwards, iPad Pro onwards, iPad Air 2 and above onwards, iPad mini 4 and above, and iPad the fifth generation and above. So wherever we went, we were at home nonstop. You know, even when I had to do a bit of work on my computer, I had FaceTime group video calling as a window on the side or up, up on my iMac as well. Thank God for Apple, if I'm honest, um, joking aside, you know, I just felt it was a blessing that all this kind of the across different devices, we were able to really keep connected with our mother. If you are able to get an iPad into the hospital, when your parents or your family members, whoever it is, are going in, try to send the iPad in at that stage, prepare your iPad in advance or your, and all your technology and all your cables, uh, which I'll talk to you about very shortly. We had to slip in an iPad afterwards and say to the receptionist to pass the iPad on to such and such person in ward number so and so. Here are some of the essential things that I, I really recommend you all should, should be uh, taking in. And all of these I'm going to be putting in the links in, uh, in the YouTube link dis description below, but I'll also be showing you on my screen here some of the devices, some of the kit that I've, uh, I'm recommending. So you can see some of these cables that I'm going to be sharing, some tablet stands, uh, and things like this, um, phone holders and things like that. The first cable that you, you should really have, this is an extension. So if you have a typical plug like this, which is the Apple plug for an iPad, right? An iPad Pro, and it's a USB connector on, on an iPad. Sorry, hang on, it's a bit out of focus. That would go into this extension cable like that. So that means your, extent, your power supply is super long now. Look at the length of that, right? Why do you need that? You can plug into the wall of the hospital let's make it easy for them that they can consistently using this plug extension cable to stay plugged in so they've got consistent power it will stay continuously charged day and night this is the cable actually i mean it didn't cost too much it says here 11.89 and remember if you have an older ipad and it's a lightning cable you probably need a lightning extension cable this was a usb c cable now i want to take you to the ipad stand You've got cases like this, right? Now the problem with the cases, and you know, my iPad has this kind of st slants back like that. If that's sitting on the hospital bedside or on that little tray table that sits in front of you sometimes, they really won't be seeing you lying down in bed and you're, it's gonna be kind of going upwards and we had to kind of just angle it as best as we could at times. Um, but then I, I sent in a second uh, stand in for my mother, which was something more like this, as you can see, you can change the angle on these. It's got a stand, it's adjustable height as well. These are great for just having the iPad consistently there. Okay, so that's that's all for stands. A case is quite helpful because um, 
on top of the stand because if if the the tablet fell onto the floor of the hospital i'm sure you know you don't want to smash screen and that would we can't be faffing around trying to get ipads repaired or replacing the ipad at these crucial moments remember you've got your power supply now through an extension cable you've got the stand to get it at the right angles now we've got to think about settings of the ipad if you're getting a new ipad like we did for our mother or getting an, an ipad and wiping it clean then I'd advise you to have just minimal contacts under the contact section. There was no other strangers calling on the iPad. In fact, I would recommend, you know, really keep it to close family because we wanted it such that this iPad that she had next to her was dedicated to her, um, to her just communicating with direct family. Our mom also had her phone with her, but the iPad was more for you know, a visual connection and stimulation for her. I mean, seeing is so much more than just hearing, uh, certainly for it lifting her, it really did help. Going into the settings here, ensure Siri is enabled. Sometimes Siri is unticked like that. It says, listen for Hey Siri. You activate that. And the reason for that is our mother could lie down, lie in a bed and say, Hey Siri, call Muhammad Ali. If the iPad is a distance away, say on a table, it would be hard to answer calls. So the automatic answer facility is great to kind of make FaceTime answer the call like at a certain number of rings that you can set. If you go to accessibility, as you can see here, so it's in the, it's, it's in the main menu, accessibility, and then go to touch, right? And then in the touch menu, um, go to call audio routing, okay? And in call audio routing, it says automatic answer calls. Turn that to on and you tick it on there. And then you can set how many seconds in you want the FaceTime audio to, to uh, answer the call. So you could have it on literally one second or two seconds. And there we go. I think um, that pretty much might sum up the settings uh, of what is required for, uh, for the iPad. Get familiar with it before you send the iPads in. Get your family, get your everyone to ring in on a group call and just test it out so that it works. Go into different rooms, otherwise you get the mics interfering. Everyone go into different rooms or dial in someone from another home and, so, and do a test video call with your, with your parents' iPad or your relative's iPad with you as well so that you can ensure that what they see on their screen, they can actually see everybody. A Bose SoundLink Mini Bluetooth speaker, or it could be any Bluetooth speaker. This is great for amplifying the sound from the iPad, certainly if it's a distance away. Um, when we were playing Quranic verses through this, um, it was just such a powerful form of, of upliftment for our mother, uh, for that spiritual upliftment. Be careful because, of course, we don't want to disrupt if it's a, a shared ward and other patients, but we were fortunate that my mother was in a single room in the end and we could, we could really play this at a good volume when we were alongside her as well. Also be mindful of maintaining power, just as we were talking about the iPad, keeping it consistently charged, keep this charged to a power supply throughout as well. The iPad that I purchased was a cellular iPad, meaning it had a slot for a SIM card, and I put in 10 gig of data. It's not essential, but it was used as a backup in case the Wi-Fi signal wasn't strong, that there would automatically be a backup of going on to the data. I didn't want to take that risk. Thankfully, in Queen Elizabeth Hospital, the, the Wi-Fi was solid, but it's just a backup, just in case. This is an unprecedented time that we're in. And if the sharing of our experience as a family can benefit others, and this calamity can be turned into a blessing, then we are content and we are happy. The steps that I provided and the tips I've given, not all of it will you be able to implement because of course, certain hospitals will differ and the certain environments that people are in. Um, the steps I've given can also be applied to those who are isolating at home, uh, elderly, family, maybe alone at home, and you can also use the iPad and technology for them as well. I pray that the steps that I've given can be a benefit so that you can see your family again and they come back healed and you can be with them again. But also the tips are also for those who may not, like us, be able to see their family again. So I pray that your families return to you. Many people are coming back healed 
and are coming back well and many are not making it but this is the order of life and alhamdulillah is what we say all praise be to god if you don't want to listen to this part you don't need to but this part i'm going to now talk about is the aftermath of the death at the current moment february the 4th uh, 2021 the law is such that it's 30 people allowed at burials i could use in the same way we use technology for the for the leading up to our mother leaving us afterwards i felt it was imperative that we allowed for those who can't be there to be there people in you know my mom's sister in bangladesh my mom's brother in new york all of our extended family literally following the hearse from our home when it came outside along to the to the graveyard and then into the burial and lowering the coffin all of that was captured by YouTube Live on a private link, okay? On a private link. Whoever wants to put that public and share it, that's your prerogative. For us as a family, that was something we wanted to keep private. So this is the selfie stick with a little base on it, just in case you want to clamp it to somewhere. But you don't need that. If you've got somebody who's literally um, going around with the camera, these selfie sticks, I don't need to really tell you, do I, where to get those. Just type that in, selfie stick. What you might need is the phone holder clip thing at the back, the mount thing. And uh, let me just jump to a page where you can see that. Um, here we go. Yeah, there you go. A few quid, five pounds. Yeah. Uh, you can see the screw at the bottom that just literally screws into the bottom of the selfie stick. We welcomed everybody to the burial ground. 30 people are allowed inside. But I said to those, and I made it crystal clear, everyone's welcome, but stay in your cars outside. Uh, you're welcome to come along as you follow the procession on arrival at the graveyard we made it crystal clear that you can stay in your cars now if those people are on whatsapp you whatsapp link them the youtube link so that they're watching in their cars and they can hear the prayers and even join in the prayers if the cars can go into the graveyard and park away from the group of 30 so if it's a big graveyard then why not? There's a verse in the Quran, Innam al usri yusra, after hardship comes ease. So I do pray that you, uh, there is ease for all of us after the initial hardships. Um, Jazakallah, thank you for everybody. God bless you all.